All right, our second talk is going to be from Dr. Ivan Joseph. He is the varsity coach at Ryerson University. Check it out. In my past life as a soccer coach, uh, once you win a national championship, everybody wants to come play for you. Really not true. Um, once you pay them $25,000 a year in scholarships, everybody wants to come play for you. And parents would always come to me and they'd say, okay, uh, my son or my daughter wants to come play at your university. What is it that we have to do? Um, you know, what are you looking for? And being the Socratic professor that I am, I was, well, what does your son or daughter do? What do they do really well that we'd be interested in? And typically their answers are, well, they've got great vision. They're really good. They can see the entire field. Or my daughter is the fastest player. There's nobody that can beat her. Or my son's got a great left foot or really, really great in the air and can head every ball. I'm like, yeah, not bad. But to be quite honest with you, those are the last things I'm looking for. The most important thing, self-confidence. Without that skill, and I use the word skill intentionally, without that skill, we are useless as a soccer player. Because when you lose sight or belief in yourself, we're done for. I use the definition of self-confidence to be the ability or the belief to believe in yourself to, to accomplish any task, no matter the odds, no matter the difficulty, no matter the adversity. The belief that you can accomplish it, self-confidence. Some of you are saying, oh, great, I don't have it, I'm so shy, I'll, I'll never do good. I'm so... And you start to drag all the way down here. But I use the word skill because I believe it can be trained. And I'll show you a couple of ways in which we do. Hopefully I won't run out of time, I don't use any slides because my speech always goes here, here, or here. So we'll see which way we get to. The easiest way to build self-confidence. There's no magic button. I can't say, hey, this plane is going down. Who can fly it? Put your hand up. I can. I'm confident. <laughs> <laughs> repetition, 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 right? What does Malcolm Gladwell call it? Uh, the 10,000 hour rule? There's no magic button. I recruited a goalie from Columbia, South America one year. Uh, big, tall, six foot three man. Uh, you know, he had hands like stone. I thought he was like flipper. Every time I throw him the ball down, down onto the ground, I was like, oh my God, we're in trouble. Simple solution, get to the wall, kick a ball against the wall and catch it. Kick the ball against the wall and catch it. His goal was 350 a day for eight months. He came back, his hands were calloused, the moisture on his hands were literally gone. He is now playing in Europe. Magic, no, repetition, repetition, repetition. The problem is we expect to be self-confident but we can't be unless the skill or the task we're doing is not novel, is not new to us. We want to be in a situation where we've created, we've had so much pressure in that, and what I mean because pressure builds diamonds, we want to be in a situation where, hey, I've done this a thousand times. I did my speech. I'm gonna tell you of one way that you can build self-confidence in others. We are coaches or educators. We are teachers. We are people who will create value in the world. And in doing that, we are critical by the nature of what we do. I am a, I am a coach. I want you to score a goal. Ball went over high. Dang it, the ball went high. Thank you, coach, I know that. <laughs> Feedback tells me that. So what do we do? I need you to put your elbow or here. I need you to put your knee over the ball. I need to follow through. Boom, land, great. Notice I never made it as a professional. What can we do? We fix mistakes. When I'm fixing that mistake, Johnny, this is terrible, you need to bend your knee, you need to do this, this. What have I done to Johnny's self-confidence? Bend your knee, think of this, think of this. Next thing you know, Johnny's crushed. Ignore what Johnny does wrong and find Bob or Sally or Frida over here. Great goal, Frida. I loved how you kept your knee low, you followed through and you landed like this. Great job. Johnny, huh? great. Johnny's not demoralized. His confidence isn't shot, and what I've done is I've built up Frida's. Imagine how we could change the way we parented kids. Instead of, get that glass off the counter, what's wrong with you? <laughs> if we catch them while they're good. Great job, great job. Thank you, Alice, for taking your glass to the counter. It sounds simple, but we forget about it. Or as educators, or somebody as a team, if we manage to praise the positive behavior that we wanted to reinforce. We forget it, it sounds so simple. Catch them when they're good. We forget it. 
It's simple. Here's what they did. There was a study in Kansas that did this. They did video, and we all do video, and we showed the video of them doing the run of the play. Uh, this goal happened because the basket wasn't protected. We didn't rotate here right. We needed to do this and then to cover the slot. And if that's the baseline, improvement of the Kansas State team went like this. Then they said they ignored all of that, and they just showed them the times they did it right. The times they did it perfect, that presented no goals, spoke to the same points, improvement went like that. It changed and revolutionized the way we as coaches interact with our student athletes. We can apply that to the business world, we can apply that to our student group works, we can apply that to our management teams easily. Catch them when they're good. Last and certainly not least, my son is really good at this. Self-confident people interpret feedback the way they choose to. I asked my son, who is by the far terrible, terrible athlete, gets it from his dad. <laughs> the games, they win five nothing. How was the game? Oh, great, I, I scored three goals, I got two assists. I'm like, I did not see him touch the puck. But he has his own perception of how he did. <laughs> I love it, right? I'm, the, I'm that guy. I'm like, I remember when I was taking my, there's, when I met my wife, it was in the comments. Ah, uh, Polly, I'd like to, would you like to go to the movies? Ladies, tingle, tingle, tingle. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, uh, she goes, um, no. I, 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 I ask her again, because I think that she just hasn't seen me in the right light. <laughs> Maybe that's not the wrong shirt on, right? Because I'm interpreting that the way I want to interpret it. Finally, I ask her out again. She gives me this one comment, right? Or, or she sent it to her friend, because that's the way you did it back then. Uh, he would not, she wouldn't date you unless it was the last person on Earth that hell was freezing over. There was a small chance we had to save the planet Earth. Some people's like, there's no chance. I'm like, you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> right? Because that's how I'm going to interpret it. If I could give you one thing to take from this, it is no one will believe in you unless you do. Listen to the words of that video. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes. We're supposed to be different, folks. And when people look at us, believe in yourself. Thank you. Feel of self-confidence with Dr. Ivan Joseph. That was fantastic. Catch them while they're doing good for your kids or your students. And also repetition brings confidence.